I hope y'all are having a blessed day. It's kind of cloudy today, but that's okay. God is still good. He's given us many gifts. Go out and find some and thank him. We are here with our next little project, and it is a continuation of our Kawandi project. Now, as I've said before, the Kawandi piece... The Kawandi piece that I have made right here is not traditional. I made it using my sewing machine and it does not have the little triangular tassels that come on the corners. So, and again, I will post a link to a wonderful blog post by a person by the name of Dizzy Quilter. She did a lovely blog article on Kawandi and the, the history of it and pointed to several resources for techniques, etc. But Kawandi is traditionally done with using, using embroidery floss and large stitches and done by hand. And it's a process where you make a quilt that is started at the edge and worked towards the center with little tiny scraps, as you can see. So as I stated in my last video, this is going to be a background for a free motion embroidery piece. And it's going to be using some fancy fabrics. I'm gonna be overlaying organza on this quilt to push the pattern into the background and make it more subdued but it will still be there and it will still add interest to the piece. So I'm going to be adding two layers of a wonderful organza that let's see you can you can see it right here and I'm going to be taking two layers of that and putting it on top. I'm going to stitch it down and then we're going to start building a background. The background is going to be stems, leaves, flowers, seed heads, all sorts of things. I'm looking to use some, maybe some burlap and some other types of fabrics to help me build this wildflower meadow background. And I'm also thinking of putting something bright but blurry in the background to make it look like a sun shining through the mist on the mountain. And the, the focus of the piece is going to be one or two milkweed blooms. And they are, they are large and they spread out and they have beautiful flowers all the way around. And I'm also going to be adding a butterfly. So come along with me as we start this project. I have layered two pieces of this organza on top here. And as you can see, or maybe not, it's a variation of blues and greens, and the greens are quite yellowy. So what I've done is I've tried to get some of the blue streaks at the top on both layers. So it will give you a very misty appearance, like there is fog that we get here so much on the mountains. I've actually been up in my wildflower meadow when a fog has settled in and yeah I like that. I have these variations of yellow and white and I'm going to cut out something that will go maybe like here and give the appearance of some brightness so it would look like there might be a sun back there. And I don't want straight edges, so I am cut off, I'm gonna cut off this salvage here and get rid of the straight edges. And this is all gonna go under the organza. Some of this, and I it has lots of lots of loose threads that I can also pull off and bundle up underneath the organza. And I have this tissue lame, and I'll I can leave some of the hangy threads. Oh, I hear the turkeys. This is some gorgeous, gorgeous silk. That's what I want, something soft. And I can put little bits of this on the piece just to make it look like it's glinting off things. Not a lot, just a little. And now let's put this back. Okay, so that is going to be the background that we start building on. So now I am going to sew all the way around the piece and so that this is down and do some just meandering stitches to catch all of this. Then we can start building the background. And this really isn't showing as much as I had hoped. So I might go look for a bit more white. I think I'm just going to use some of this lace to lay it down in the center. 
this is not this is not doing it for me so it's going to be very subtle and that's fine and now one other thought that i had put this in between the two layers of organza so that it has a better chance of showing up so i'm going to pick all this stuff up and flop down one layer and i did iron this a bit i just kind of held it very carefully above fabric and now I'm just trying to layer this in and that makes the center stand out a bit more yes that's it that was what i wanted all right now i'm going to move that up i suddenly got real hot and i had to go change i had a sweatshirt on i like that so let's see if we can't get it to stay down time for some pins oh that breeze is heavenly and i'm gonna leave these little sparkles in here they can do whatever they like i'm just putting some pins in here to hold things steady for me i will try very hard not to say bad words when i get stabbed i am ready to begin so i am going to start by sliding this down till i can find the corner i'm using a wide open zigzag foot and I am going to make sure that the edge of the foot rides along the edge of the quilt. What I'm doing, and you probably can't see, is I am repositioning the pins to get rid of any fullness so we don't have any puckering. So that's what I'm doing. It's taking so, so long. Coming into the home stretch here. That is sewn down on the edges, which is what I was looking for. And now I'm gonna do some green stitching, just meandering in the lower portion. As we work through this series, cause it's gonna be a series, I am making these videos long on purpose because I really want you to be able to see my process and see how I see how my, my brain follows through with a project. Because if I can show you how I do it, you can certainly do this. It is not difficult. I'm just taking my time and I'm trying to think through the next steps. So I've trimmed this down and now I'm just going to do some meandering stitches across the piece following some of these lines just to anchor it down and then we can start building our background. Okay, I'm going to continue on like this and I'm going to sew over all of these items just doing back and forth lines so I know that everything is caught. Okay, this is an update. I have things pinned down the way, or sewn down the way I want. I don't have any more loose edges to worry about at the moment. So I'm quite happy with the way it looks. You can still see the quilt behind it, which was my intention, but it is subdued enough just to help the piece look like sunshine speckling through the mist and just making it look like it is a misty meadow and that's what I'm going for. Okay I've switched over to my darning foot and I've dropped the feed dogs and what I'm going to be doing now is just doing some grasses. I'm using a thicker variegated thread. They're going to be done in layers. You can see the little freehand embroidery seat heads. I'm not trying to, you know, be accurate. And again, this is the background, so. And I'm not gonna do too much more grass right now because the piece is starting to get sucked up from the from the heavy amount of stitching so i'm moving more forward now so i'm starting to layer that and i have these pieces of organza that i've cut 
and random shapes and I have them pinned down and I am going to be doing some straight stitch. I have the feed dogs raised. I have my, uh, my quarter inch foot on and I'm just going to be doing some straight stitching to get these sewn down. And if you notice the edge of the piece is starting to fray, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. I will give it a haircut and I may do another layer of stitching just on the outside of this, like between the edge of the piece and this, just to secure it a little bit better. But I did want it to fray. You can see over here on this side that it's really starting to get hairy. So I'm just going to take my time here and I'm going to sew these pieces down. So there we are so far. I'm liking this. This is, this organza is, I think it's, I, I only have a small piece of it, but I think it was some kind of grassy something something fabric. There is some grass and I think it's looking nice. I added another layer in the front and this is another organza. I will continue on and I'll come back when I have more to show you. I have all these elements that I've cut out. All right, now I have this cut velvet that I was going to use to make stems. I'm happy with that. Ouch. Okay, there's that. And I have leaves. Now, if you look at milkweeds, they're their, their leaves kind of droop down. They sprout out, but they, they droop. They're not, they don't stand upright. All right, I think that is going to take care of the milkweed. I like the different colors. This looks darker and flatter, so it kind of pushes into the back, and these look like they could have sun glinting off of them. So I like those. Now I just have to think about how I want to approach this. I think the front here needs some more work before I put the milkweed on because the milkweed is obviously the most the, the closest thing to you so that would be like the last thing to go on. So I like these. I'm going to take them off. I'm going to put some more things in the foreground and then I'll come back. I had to take a break. My my back is not happy. The height of this machine is just too much. I have added some additional grasses down here in the foreground and now I'm going to add a few bits and bobs that I think will look nice. I'm taking all of these because this is going to be the milkweed and I'm just going to put it under here and keep it out of the way. So for now, I am going to sew down these pieces. I am liking this a lot. I like that better than these. So I will cut more of these and add them in place of this. And then I'll come back and show you how, how it looks. I've added another one of these and time to do the milkweed. There are the stems, and now I have all these leaves. Now, I'm trying to sew that curl down. Okay, and I have one more feather. One more. They're not feathers. One more leaf left. It will work there. Okay, I am looking through the camera, and I like the way that looks. I don't want it to be dead center. And this one, I envision this one to be about here and then this one to be here. And then the butterfly will be over here. Now I just need to sew everything down. And I think that I'm going to turn the camera off and sew this down. You've seen me sew these down there. So they're just, they're, I'm just doing a straight stitch, nothing fancy and I will come back after I have it sewn down because I need the camera out of my way to try and help my neck out.
it here is an update and I have to apologize. I, I was taking a time-lapse video of the process so you could just, I guess, watch me do this. And then my stepmom called to thank me for her Mother's Day gift. So we were having such a lovely conversation. I haven't talked to her in a while. And I just started sewing very quietly on the piece. And then after I hung up, I realized, oh no, dummy, you didn't record any of that. So I will give you an update. Let me just snip these little threads. So here is the piece so far. And I am very, very happy with it. I had a lot of fun with these leaves. I was able to stitch down this little curly cue. And I, if you look at a milkweed plant, they wilt very, very quickly, and the leaves just kind of look tired. And when I used to, when we first discovered the wildflower meadow, uh, I used to try and pick the flowers, and by the time I would bring them back to the house, they would be dead. And so I, I started taking a bucket of cold water up there with me, and I put them in the water instantly as soon as they were cut, and they survived quite a while that way. So um, th these leaves are very wilty and very tired. And that's why I said earlier that these leaves tend to kind of go down. So I'm very, very happy with this. And I may put another stem going off the side with a few leaves on it just to balance out the darkness. Uh, because these are this is quite dark, but I did want it to stand out. So, but I, I think to balance it, I may just put a stem with some leaves going off here to kind of balance it. And that way, that way, I think it'll look. I don't know. Right now, it looks like it might be heavy on one side. So I think I need to add, you know, something else here. Uh, there won't be any blooms on it, or maybe I'll just do some buds on it or something. Maybe what I'll do, I know what I'll do. I'm going to do a seed pod. I'm going to do a milkweed seed pod. And they are quite elaborate looking. So I will do that. I'll have to find the right fabric. I think, I think I've got some fabric that will work for it. And I actually have something really fun. I went over to my studio and I foraged and I found this. And oh my goodness, is this, this is like, this is like feathers or something. It's like down. It's unbelievable. So I'm going to actually stuff this into a milkweed pod because when it explodes, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to cut a chunk of this off and I am going to build a seed pod and we'll put that over here. So that is an update. I had a lovely call with my with my stepmom and I will check back in with you when I am when I have more formulated this design. Here is an update. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put these down here and they'll go behind the stem and these will go like that. And then this stuff is so fun. Pays to keep fabric for 40, 50 years. Okay, so this is going to get laid on there like that. And then this is going to be like that. And there is your milkweed pod. And I can also stick this back there to make it look like there's another lobe because I there's there's several sections of a milkweed pod I think there's at least three maybe four so that will go like that and there'll be little explosions of milkweed seeds coming out of the whole thing and then this will kind of go off like that I'm very excited <laughs> all right I'm gonna go back to time lapse and Here is our milkweed pod, and I am very enamored with it. Hello, young lover, whoever you are. I, I like it, and these will get trimmed off. I do have to do some stay stitching around the edge because things are getting kind of hairy. Mr. Dinky has 
has to come over and give me his stamp of approval. And it's starting to flatten out. This area was more heavily stitched and this was getting wavy. So it has flattened down a bit. And I believe that with a good, a good steam press, I can get this flat. And then I'm also going to do some stay stitching around the edge and it may be some kind of decorative. So I have to practice that. For now, that is where we are. I think I'm going to end the video here for this episode. And here, here is where we are. And I am absolutely loving it. There we are, there's the milk pod the milkweed pod so i am really enjoying this it doesn't show up in the camera but you can clearly see all the pieces in the background and this may have been silly of me to cover up a kawandi piece but the person that has asked for this piece also sent me the link to the kawandi video which made it bubble to the top of my list. And I thought, why not put the two of them together because that special lady is the one that gave me the idea. I am very pleased with how this project is working. I just love looking at it. I think it's really, really coming along nicely. The next part will be the milkweed blooms. There'll be two blooms and then the butterfly. And I think that that will be enough for another episode. And I really need to, I'm in a lot of pain. So this, this sewing machine needs, something needs to be done with this table because I can't take it anymore. I want to thank you all so very much for watching and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for subscribing to my channel and for hitting the like button and leaving those wonderful comments that just make my day. You all mean the world to me and I thank Jesus every day that you all are in my life. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do click it. It really does help my analytics and it helps push my content out to new people that may be interested in things that you will like and they you know if they if, if the way youtube works is youtube sees that you look at these 10 videos and you subscribe to that one and you liked that one and you commented on that one so they look at the topics of those videos and then they look for other people other other people on youtube that have the same the same characteristics the same likes and dislikes and enjoy watching the same topics so they recommend me to those people and that's how your channel grows and that's how you try and make a living on youtube <laughs> believe me i'm not making a living but you know it, it's it's taking the small edge off all of the things that that i have got you know the camera the the computers, the microphone that should be right by my face and isn't. And I have, I have brain dead issues with my microphone and I have to keep boosting my audio gain in my videos because I keep forgetting to put the microphone near me. So, you know, if enough of you subscribe, then maybe in a couple of months, I'll have enough money to get a lavalier mic that I can have clipped to me so that I can actually walk around the room and that would be really fantastic. So along the same lines, I would like to invite you to come over to Coffee. That's ko-fi.com. I'm over there at 70 Acres Studio. I have a store and I'm selling patterns and I have quilts for sale. I have scarves. I've got all sorts of things and more patterns will be coming. I have mug rug patterns and uh, all the patterns that I share with you on YouTube are over in the shop. They don't cost anything. You just add them to your cart and check out and you can download them. And you can also, if you are so inclined, you can sign up to be a subscriber and to have exclusive content such as the the bird the bird mm, yeah such as the bird patterns and we're having a great time over there and you can join me on discord as well we're building a loving caring and sharing community over there of like-minded folks and i'm posting daily well not daily but I'm, I'm posting devotionals and when the lord speaks to me i i 
I post and I share that info with you and hope that and encourage that you do the same. So go outside and find a gift from the Lord. There are, they are many. I will talk to you all very, very soon. I will see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio with our next video. And I love you all very, very much. You mean the world to me. You have a very blessed day, a very blessed week. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, John Boy.